Have we got a treat for you, an ancestry adventure. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts and I'm standing outside of the Golden Corral in Richmond, Kentucky. And I'm paired up with a group of family members that are going on an ancestry adventure to find the home site and the grave of one of their most important ancestors. Now, they don't know where the house is and they don't know where the graveyard is so we are going to go on an adventure and I'm not sure if we're gonna find anything or not but we're gonna be there to document it so I'm gonna turn it over to them and they can tell you a little bit about this family member that we're getting ready to go explore my name is Rebecca Clark Brothers and I'm a descendant of the Reverend Dr. Christopher Clark we believe he is buried or well, excuse me we know he's buried on, a far, on his family farm on Lancaster Road uh, in Madison County. Uh, his son, whom I fr I'm also from, is buried with him and his original cabin is in the farmhouse. Of course, everything is falling down, but we're here to save our history of the Clark family. This is my son, Lucas Brothers, who is a uh, second vice president of the Kentucky State Children of the American Revolution. This is my favorite nephew, Landon Keeling. And this is my other son, Samuel Brothers, who was state recording secretary of Children of the American Revolution. And I am a teacher in Washington County High School, uh, where I've taught for 23 years there. Uh, English and Arts and Humanities. We actually live in Nelson County, but I teach in Washington County where I have also family members of the Clarks buried in Washington County as well. It's about an hour and a half the most. That's going slow. We just get on the BG and there you are. The Reverend Dr. Christopher Clark was born where his baptism states in England January 27th of 1754. His parents were James and Susan Clark. We don't know when he came over here, but we know it was after the revolution. He ended up, and like I said, the, that part of his life is a little sketchy, we just don't know. But he married a lady named Agnes Wright, the daughter of Peter Wright, who was a, a veteran of the French and Indian War. Hi, I'm Kathy Clark Webb. I'm from Dyersburg, Tennessee. Uh, I'm a paralegal and I am here to do research genealogy work and also to help discover the graves of my fifth great grandfathers and uh, here to meet with my, my cousin uh, Rebecca and we hope to be successful in locating the graves that we know existed here on this land that um, over time uh, have been lost. So. We're hoping to be successful today and going to say a lot of prayers that we are. If we find the graves today, I will be very happy for several reasons, one of which is that we can identify where our ancestors have been buried at, rediscover that, and we can also provide more history about them to the State Historical Society, the local historical society, so they'll know a little bit more about what our ancestors did to help establish the communities that they lived in. If for some reason we aren't successful in finding the graves that we're looking for, it uh, doesn't mean that it's over. Uh, we will gather more data and we will continue the search and hopefully at some other point we will find them. All right, let's go on the adventure. Let's go. My association with this farm uh, is that my dad's sister married Frank Connerton Jr. and his parents had purchased this farm back in the early 1900s moving out of Estill County. There were two sons, Frank and Ed, and Ed lived in a house that was where this lane went across at 75 and then started down to the Lancaster Road. Right. I don't know if you're familiar with the Lancaster I've been looking at the maps okay. and things. So, uh, and, this, the house where Frank and Lena Connelton uh, lived back at the end of the lane, 
was in it many times as a child. She had the first television. Oh, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> and uh, I never realized when I was growing up that it was a log cabin. Actually, two log cabins that uh, Sharon may have told you about. Yeah. And we're hoping that we maybe could uh, salvage at least one of them and repurpose it. Uh, so, where we'll be going is to the west of the log, or log cabins, the house, and a barn. And since this farm was really farm, the growth has just gone berserk back here. Oh, and I'm, when we get back, I'll show you some okay, thank aerials. You. I like this. Yeah, it's thickets. And uh, I've looked several times trying to find the graveyard. And I've talked to uh, my cousin and her cousin who lived right here mm -hmm. and haven't gotten a real good fix on exactly where it was. We have an aerial map where Judy... How Judy's son oh, made this aerial oh, map to okay. to me. All right, okay. And if, she marked it. Okay, on the map. If, if you may have better information. Well, I've talked to Judy and she said her son had been back there, but she didn't volunteer to give me a. Well, she yeah. says it hurts her to see the farm as it is. Okay. And I understand that because that's right. where she grew up. I right. was here, my, my brother found this information literally by chance in Mercer County Library. He just picked up, yes, he picked, of course this is before the internet, he picked up a little booklet that said cemeteries of Madison County. Well, he just opened it up and literally first page there okay. it was. And so we came up here and it was really strange because Ruth Congleton, or Congleton, right. she went to high school with my mother in, nine, yes, they, really? gra they graduated 1938 yeah. from Forkstown High School. Okay. His mom was, you know, I think Ruth married a guy with that name. So she calls another <laughs> classmate and Marie yeah. Barnes Hubbard confirmed it. Yes, Ruth did marry that man. So we came up here, talked, and as you, like you said, I was standing in the log cabin, never knew it until Judy okay. told me. I said, I was up there playing yeah. with the, they had those skipper keys dogs. And I was playing with the dogs. And Ruth said, you were in the log cabin. Yeah. So we saw, not Ruth, I'm sorry, uh, Judy, but we saw the graves. We, but nobody had a camera. Okay. Well, I, I was not aware that the living room yes. uh, was a single story log cabin. I'd always heard that the, the front of the house was a two-story log, okay. which it is, and I don't know if Sharon volunteered to story, show that to story you. Story and a half. Yeah, story mm -hmm. and a half, mm -hmm. but it was finished up as two stories mm -hmm. when it was kind of renovated. So, well, let's go on back there, and I've got some stuff about the land to share with you okay, great. when we get okay. back there, because right, I've done some research on it. All right. Christopher Clark was a preacher as yes. you're aware yes. yes and he married at least a couple of my ancestors okay, who had a farm here here and here yes <laughs> well we found his information my brother lee did uh from west well of course it was virginia then and it said he had married about 200 couples in virginia yeah. before he even came over here okay all right let me get my All right, be very careful on the drive back there. We can extract you if we need to. <laughs> Are we all just going together? Right? We've already, uh, probably a good idea to only go in a couple of cars. Yeah, I know, my we, We've yeah. got a four-wheel drive, no, so. four-wheel probably yeah, would be if we want, uh, if the best. Want as many people, to, I've got three rows of seats in there if y'all want to ride in now. Do we need guns? Put the boys in Do we need guns? No. No. <laughs> and I hope we don't. <laughs> yeah, we hope we don't need guns, right? Yeah. I, we, I, I've if never we do, I always on have one. Farm before. The <laughs> Peter's Plantation is now Carrollton, West Virginia, although then it was Virginia. Christopher and Nancy they had three children, Elizabeth, Peter Wright Clark, and then William, 
Wesley Clark, whom we are descended. He married at least 200 people. He did. He was educated by the Church of England, but once he got over here, he heard a Methodist preacher and converted to be a Methodist, and he preached all through West Virginia and Madison County, and they ended up buying a farm, uh, Lancaster Road, and he also owned land in Rockcastle County, Cumberland County, and Tennessee. And he died when he's about 65. He left his widow everything, and upon her death, it was to be divided amongst the children. Elizabeth was to get the farm in Rockcastle County, Peter was to get the farm in Tennessee, and William was to get the farm here in Madison County, but unfortunately, William died before his mother. He was 37 years old and left his wife with 13 and a half children. She was pregnant with uh, Nancy Ellen when, he, when uh, William died. So his he let, lost everything, basically, besides his death. Of course, we don't know how he died, probably one of the common diseases from back then. His wife had to go to court to be uh, to get her money. For Dr. Christopher, he was described in his obituary in the paper, the Lexington Record, as a very simple man. He said his clothes were homespun, he wore a big hat, and his obituary stated that he was just a just a really special, nice person. Of course, those are our words, but it said that he was very humble. And well, I mean, assuming since he was a preacher and a doctor, he would have been. And really, that's about all we know about him because he owned land and then he didn't fight in a war. William did not fight in any wars either. But then William's son, Richard, and that's who I come from, is Richard. He fought with John Hunt Morgan and he was captured and put into uh, Fort Douglas in Chicago. And then when he was re released, he went back home. But Christopher himself was just too much of, I guess, a humble, I mean, he took an oath with uh, God and medicine to save lives, not destroy. This journey is very special to me. I come from a long line of Americans. We were here, most of us were here way before the revolution even started. And I tell my children and my students that unless you know your past, whether it's yours, your states, your countries, you do not know yourself. So for me, it's it, it's a, I don't wanna call it closure, but it's a healing process to know that the man that I come from, that I carry his DNA and genes in my body and passed on to my children, there he is laying right there on a hillside on a farm in Madison County. If we don't find him today, which we hope we, in the late 80s, I was here with my brother, but that was before Ancestry and a lot of technology and nobody remembered to bring a camera to take pictures of it. So now that I'm older, I want my children to see their ancestors' grave. But if we don't find it today, we know we tried and gave it our best, uh, had the best opportunity to at least look for our ancestor because, you know, there's that old saying that you're ne you die three times, once when you die, once when you're buried, and once when people stop talking about you. And we don't want the Dr. Reverend Christopher Clark to be forgotten about. She finds them. She said she thinks she found them. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not. Let's go look. Let's make sure. Yeah. All of them, old and young alike. Have you been on a graveyard hunt like this before? Yes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 
lot of the Johnson grass. Well, okay, now where did he go? That's why I asked you. Oh, about. there he is, right there. My feet are very big and tangled up in all this grass. Look at this here. <laughs> we're coming. We're, okay. They said they were down, I think, this way. Milkweed. Really? Milkweed. I always thought that. Oh, Becky! No, oh my God, there he is. There. Oh, that might not be him. There's Who's place. got water? That's Christopher Clark. Oh. What's it say? I can't read it. Who's got a bottle of water? In memory of the Reverend it says Doc. Christopher. That's him. Christopher Clark. For the love of God, take pictures. Now, what we can do? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What's it like, ladies? Oh, I found it. Well, if you don't put water on it, go ahead and get the whole thing wet. So it won't be all this is just amazing. We actually found him. Yeah, awesome! Like I told you he had a big, uh, awesome, awesome. All of his information was on this. The no, Reverend Dr. Christopher Clark right, died coordinate. July 18, 1830, age 76. Not there's two <laughs> other ones. Right there's there's one right there. Yeah. Now going under. There's one right there. Yeah. Here's a big one. And here's a big one. Yeah. Um, Ken, can you do a GPS coordinate on this area right here? Mm -hmm. so, so Sharon, were you the ones who found him? Sharon, uh, Sharon found him. All about my itself. flags are out in the car. Yeah. The guy sent the kids back for it's the close. flags and flowers. What do you think, ladies? Um, we're I'm just speechless. <laughs> Thank we, you, Sharon. <laughs> yes, that we actually found him. Sharon looks like she's found William, or his son, who we came from. This is William's footstone. Okay, and there's one right there, back behind you. And like I said, yeah, there's one that I don't know um, who this Jerome is. He's never showed up in any records. Well, he may have been his friend. Uh, but what's that over there? I mean, they use the same names: That's Christopher, huge. William, James. That's really big. Um, Tom went to get his shovel. Okay. We need some Here, more. No, we, do no we don't use this uh, shark point. Uh, uh, level edge. But thank you. Let me get a picture. Okay. There's another one right there. What's your last name? Graves. <laughs> Kentucky Graves. <laughs> Here we go. Full <laughs> bean there. <laughs> See, oh, yeah. on my mom's to, side was already. Well, I have to uh, uh, lace off the clogs. You know, mama's side has been done for. Generations. Who's that? I'm gonna help them. I mean, I've got three kids sitting here instead of uh, people in the late 60s or whatever doing it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. uh, me. Yeah. Get over I'm there. in my early 70s. <laughs> uh, we still have cats. Who's the more? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like. Is that William? That's one right there. That's probably Jerome's then. I just love Sharon. She's my new best friend. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was about to give up. Oh, Sharon, uh, I was. It's a bulldog if you say cemetery. I guess so. <laughs> oh, WC. Yeah. That's William. That so there, should, there may be a headstone and a footstone. That should be a footstone, probably, for him. That's how they mark the footstone. Lucas, are you happy? Yeah, there's stone. There's stone right here. Uh, Didn't you say, or somebody say that that uh, they had a, the stone on top of the graves to keep varmints out? Slab. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking that big one is. Yeah. Uh, These Ten minutes before Sharon yeah, yeah. yelled that she had found something, 
I was out in the field by myself, and I stood and I said a prayer to please lead us to my ancestors' graves. I asked God to make that available for us, and here we are. The awesomeness. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Memory 1878 M-I-A-H Maya W Jeremiah Jeremiah, yeah. 1878, no, 1818, sorry, 1818. That'd be in the Bakri book, we'll have to look. Yeah. Or in our genealogy, too. Yeah. Uh, he only had the three children, Christopher did. Elizabeth, who married a Ballard, they lived in Rockcastle County. Uh, William, who is here. Right. And then uh, Peter W., named that heiress. Grandpa. This chisel marks. Yeah. Yeah. Good, really nice chisel marks on mm, the front of that stone. Beautiful. Landing it down there. There's the words. That could be the top of that other one. Yeah. Thirty-seven years. Uh, great shop member. <laughs> well, this and uh, national awards for CAR. Oh, now look at him. Now he wants to be in the picture. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, his initials, maybe, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, D, take it to G. Oh. Because you got to connect. Now, Ken's a photo shopping. Well, here. First. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malkuto Le'olam Bayad Thank you, Father, for this day, for this beautiful weather. Thank you for these folks that came out with us, and thank you that you allowed us to find this man's grave. And we love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Eternal peace. And know that we were here to make sure that Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. Okay. Uh, now we can go sit down and cry somewhere. Yeah. All right, All right. Here, we, we here we are. We just left the graves. They were discovered, and we're so excited about what happened. And we, um, one of the things that we did while we, that we were there, we cleaned uh, some of the stones off, cleared away debris. We brought flowers to place on the, the stones that we found, and we also had prayer over them because we wanted to make sure that our ancestors knew we were there and that we were going to be protecting them from now on. Hopefully we can um, take some action to make sure that the grave area is protected uh, from vandalism or any other destruction that might happen. So we are so excited. Um, we look forward to the next step in this journey that we've been on for quite some time now. I, I felt, I know we said our prayers obviously, but I felt that they pulled us to the right spot to find them. I've always heard that if, when they want to be found, they will be found. And I think their DNA inside of us called us to them. And that's how they found us. Which we is, found them. Which a funny thing is, 10 minutes before we heard Sharon discover the graves, I said a prayer out in the middle of a field asking for them to guide us to where they were. And they 10 did. minutes later, the graves were found. Yes. So they so, did guide us to them. So we're ecstatic. We are. We're just so excited. And um, hope other people who go on this journey uh, have the success that we did. And if they don't, don't give up. No. Keep on after it. And maybe one day you'll be able to um, have the success that we did today, too. Great. Great.
My name is Lucas uh, C. Brothers, and uh, I'm 14. Uh, and Mr. Clark was his, is my sixth great grandfather, and it was quite interesting to uh, go and find his grave today. I'm Landon Keeling. I'm 12 years old. I'm not really related to this uh, this guy. I'm, I'm just along for the ride to help as as I can, and it was a really really a fun trip and. Uh, to see everybody's faces light up whenever they found the graves. My name is Sam T. Brothers. This guy was my sixth great grandfather. And I, I, it was a really cool journey because I was really surprised we found them. They were just stones laying down on the ground. Who knew that it would be him? I think this is important because it's going to help preserve his name of that he was a, a, a doctor and a reverend. And it'll help preserve his name in a, by telling people that he's out there. And uh, hopefully we can get the uh, stone fixed. I think this is important uh, to pr pres preserve um, uh, his his name, just like he said, his name, and like make sure uh, the stones and everything is well preserved and uh, is is a stays a stays a figment of time. I think that's important because this guy was the first person in our family to come over here from England and was the first to settle in America. And, and I think that's cool. If you want to go on uh, fun trips like this, you can join CAR, Children of, of the American Revolution. Uh, you can find find them at uh, KSCAL. That's the Kentucky's website. I am uh, second vice president, and my brother here is he's a, a recording secretary. And I'm I'm gonna join. Yeah, he's a new Potential member. incoming member. Yeah. Wow. What a thing that we've done today. We started out not knowing whether or not we were going to find anything at all. And we ended the day by rediscovering the ancestors of this family that you saw today. This ancestor was lost to oblivion. Nobody knew that he was out there. As a matter of fact, I live less than a mile and a half from here and had no idea that this farm existed, let alone the graves of these people that are buried out here. When we started this adventure, we didn't know if we were going to find anything at all. But we felt that it was important at least give some effort to rediscover these people. They're important because their DNA is inside of us. Some people believe that they guide us. And by honoring them and rediscovering them, we bring honor to ourselves. So we encourage folks that would like to do something like this, please go out and do it. You will find it very spiritually rewarding. And we're glad to be part of this project. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.